The False Representation of Schizophrenia in the Media by Tamara Harunian The media has been the center of controversy in regards to mental illness and stigma. I looked at different forms of media and how they enable the perpetuation of negative messages about those affected by schizophrenia. It is estimated that one in five people will suffer from a mental illness each year. With mental illness being so prominent, it becomes crucial to study why there are so many negative views directed toward people who are affected by mental illness. Before I discuss the research, I'd like you to take a moment to think of someone with a mental illness. Did you picture someone who looked something like this? The reality is that mental illness impacts people regardless of age, race, or socioeconomic status. It doesn't discriminate against gender and certainly doesn't discriminate against those who are major celebrity figures. There are many stereotypes that surround mental illness. Those diagnosed with psychological disorders are often perceived as dangerous, unpredictable, and childlike, as well as countless other stereotypes. A wealth of research is dedicated to the association between mental illness and violence. In a study conducted by Link, Felon, Bresnahan, Stuve, and Pescolito, the overwhelming majority of respondents to a survey perceived those with mental illness as more dangerous than individuals in the general public. Let me tell you a little bit about schizophrenia and what the diagnosis means for those who are affected. The National Institute of Mental Health defines schizophrenia as a chronic and severe mental disorder that affects how a person thinks, feels, and behaves. The symptoms of schizophrenia fall under three categories, positive, negative, and cognitive. Individuals usually experience symptoms between the ages of 16 and 30. The positive symptoms include delusions, hallucinations, and disorganized thinking. The negative symptoms include restricted affect, which refers to diminished range of emotional expression, elogia, which is the poverty of speech, and avolition, an inability to initiate and persist in goal-oriented activities. The cognitive symptoms include poor executive functioning, trouble focusing or paying attention, and problems with working memory. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, Roughly 1.1% of adults in the United States live with schizophrenia. Now it's time to clear up some misconceptions perpetuated by the media. Myth. Individuals with schizophrenia have multiple personalities. This is one of the biggest misunderstandings about schizophrenia. One poll conducted by the National Alliance on Mental Illness found that 64% of Americans believe the condition involves a split personality. Schizophrenia doesn't involve different personalities, but individuals affected by the disorder may lose touch with reality. Myth. Individuals with schizophrenia are out of control and dangerous. Although in the media, individuals with mental illnesses are more likely to be portrayed as perpetrators rather than victims of crime, in reality, these individuals are typically more vulnerable to being victims of both violent and nonviolent crimes than those without such disorders. Myth. Individuals with schizophrenia will never lead productive lives. This is bogus. With the proper medication and therapy, individuals affected by the disorder could go on to live full, productive lives. Schizophrenia can make it harder to land a job and go to work every day. But with treatment, many people can find a position that fits their skills and abilities. Research has shown that the power the media holds, combined with the frequency in which it is used, makes it one of the most significant influences on society. Even though public awareness of mental illness has increased, stigma has not been reduced. In fact, stigmatized attitudes towards those with mental illness have increased, rather than decreased, despite gains in knowledge. Whether we would like to acknowledge it, what we see and hear in the media impacts us. We tend to trust what is put out in the media without questioning the source and its validity. A review conducted by the National Mental Health Association in the U.S., examined which media sources people use most frequently to obtain information regarding mental illness. 
The results showed that the public most often gathers its information regarding individuals with mental illness from TV, newspapers, and the internet. This information seen in the media is often extremely negative, and it paints damaging and often false pictures of those with a mental illness. Researchers Wall, Wood, and Richards examined mental illness references in print media in 1999. They examined 300 articles from major newspapers such as the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Boston Globe. One of the most common themes in the articles was dangerousness with 26% of references alluding to crime or violence being committed by someone with a mental illness. They also found extremely negative headlines in reference to mental illness, such as history of schizophrenia detailed for man held in subway attack. Headlining an article in this manner portrays the idea that mental illness was the only reason the individual committed the crime, linking mental illness with violence. In a 2012 study, when comparing South Korean newspaper articles spanning from 2000 to 2004 to articles from 2005 to 2010, there was a notable increase in negative references. In 2013, this compared Belgian coverage of schizophrenia with coverage of autism and found many more negative articles for schizophrenia. 42% were framed in a negative light in regards to schizophrenia, as compared to only 10% of articles about autism. Research has shown that the media can directly impact negative views of mental illness. On-screen portrayals present misleading and stigmatizing information about mental illness, most notably schizophrenia. Visual media contributes to a negative social branding by associating mental illness with unfavorable conditions and behaviors. Lawson and Boots analyzed 34 animated Disney movies and found that 85% of the films examined contained verbal references to mental illness. The most commonly used references to refer to mental illness within these movies included crazy, mad, and nutty. In these films, the references were commonly used to segregate, alienate, and denote an inferior status to those deemed as mentally ill. In P.R. Owen's study, the movies analyzed depicted 69% of the individuals engaging in self-harm contrasted with the 10 to 16% of those with the disorder who are actually known to self-harm. 35 of the 42 characters used to portray those with schizophrenia demonstrated violent behavior at 83%. Roughly one out of every four characters committed suicide in the films. The medical model draws on the idea that disabilities belong to the individual and implies inferiority. The disability is not related to society, but results from one's limitations. The medical model places the responsibility on the affected individual and stresses that the individual seek a diagnosis to identify his or her disability. Society is not obligated to change to make life easier for those with disabilities. Instead, those individuals must change to fit the society. The social model developed as a response to the medical model. It views disability as a consequence of barriers imposed by one's society, economy, and culture. The elimination of attitudinal, physical, and institutional barriers will help those with disabilities and put them on an even playing field. This model places the onus on society to change, not the individual. The society is held responsible for the removal of barriers which prevent those with disabilities from having the same opportunities as others. In accordance with the social model of disability, society is responsible for reversing the damage imposed by attitudinal, physical, and institutional barriers. It is on us to put an end to stigma surrounding mental illness. It is on us to portray mental illness accurately so those who are affected have a fair shot at living their lives with equal opportunities. It is on us to put an end to the negativity. We have to educate ourselves on stigma and discrimination and advocate for change.